Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second YouTube channel. And today I wanted to take a look at the Paladin EX starter Pokemon that are going to be coming out in our June set. Now, over in Japan, obviously Japan got the new cards earlier than we did. And they've had the uh, Paladin starter EXs, Kokwabo, Miascarta, uh, and also the uh, Skeledurge for a lot longer than we had them. So definitely I think it'd be very relevant to look at these lists and how these Paladin starters play before we do get them. Of course, if y'all enjoy the early Japan deck list analysis videos, make sure you leave a like on the video. And if you're new to the second channel, click that subscribe button down below. So you never miss an upload on the channel. I do want to look at all the other EXs uh, like uh, Shine Pao and Ting Lu, I think, are also seeing a bit of play. I want to look at all kinds of new decks from Japan. We will look at all those in a couple more videos in the future. And if y'all go on to enjoy the series again, make sure you leave a like. But we're going to send these off with Meow. Skarada, which is actually considered the best Paldean starter. Uh, we can take a look here at what it does. So what Meow Skarada does, basically it's got the attack um, Scraping Claws. If your opponent's active has any damage on it, this attack does 120 more damage and of course is 100 base. So for a double turbo, uh, you can do 200 damage, which isn't bad. Of course, they have to have damage on them. So by default, you're doing 210 damage. But you do actually have a pretty strong ability here with uh, Bouquet Magic. Once you're in turn, you may discard a Grass Energy from your hand. If you do, put three damage counters on one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. That is a very, very strong ability. Being able to discard energy from your hand to put three damage on something is pretty strong. It's basically like a, a buffed up version of Rapid Strike Inteleon, where instead of putting two damage counters on a Pokemon, you're putting it three damage on a Pokemon, which is pretty good. Now, of course, Grass Pokemon do have quite a bit of support in the format, and Meow Skarda is really seeing a lot of play. Obviously, an attack like this is also very good against Lost Box. Let's take a look at some of the early lists we got. So the first one here is using Arceus V-Star and Meow Skarada in the same deck and using a Radiant Alakazam to control the damage. As you can see, this list also plays Iono in the deck, which is obviously a very strong new supporter card. Um, this uh, deck is in the uh, Snow Hazard Clay Burst format as opposed to the Triple Beat format that Japan was working with when these cards got revealed. Um, but again, RC seems like a decent partner. You're able to just have a very strong backup attacker alongside having the Meow just spreading damage. Obviously, the best card with Meow Skarda, and you'll see these in all these lists, is playing at the Energy Retrieval cards. But this build here uses Lilligant V-Star and Medicham, but also playing Superior Energy Retrieval, which is a new, uh, not a new card, it's an old card coming back in the new set. Um, you discard two cards from your hand, and then you can get four basic energy from discard pile back in your hand. It is a very strong card that saw a lot of play back in the day with Blastoise Keldeo. And that card is really good with Meow Skarda, because you're able to get back for Grass Energy from your discard pile for the, your ability. And this list also does play the Lilligan V-Star, which lets you set up with Lilligan's V-Star power to get up to five Grass Pokemon and energy in any way you like. Obviously, the big thing with Meow Skarda is it is a stage two Pokemon. The nice thing about the Arceus build, though, is you can also use Starbirth to help you find Rare Candy, which is pretty cool. And this build here, you know, you have the barrel to try to get the Rare Candy. And uh, it seems like a pretty straightforward build. But again, this build here does utilize the Meowth a little bit more as your main attacker. As you do also play Cheryl in the deck, there's that one of Cheryl, which does allow you to fully heal your Meowth as it really attacks for just a double turbo. And uh, we do see both these lists play four double turbos. We got another list here, just straight up playing at Meowth and the Medicham. Actually, a bit more of a, uh, I guess, like a faster build using the Mew from Celebrations, allowing you to get an item card from the top of your deck, which can be very, very helpful when setting up Rare Candy. And then again, we got another build here with Arceus. Arceus seems like a pretty okay partner. You're already playing the Double Turbo, and the Starbirth does allow you to find the Rare Candy Meow Skarda a lot easier, which is really respectable. So I do like the idea of Arceus with it. The only problem with Arceus is you're not playing any other Grass Attackers, so you don't have like a, a Grass Pokemon to build up. But it's not a bad partner. And then we got another build here, this one using Full Arts. Actually playing the Luxray, uh, which is really interesting. And on top of Luxray, we also do see the Mew in the decks. Build more of a teched out build of um, you know, Scarta. There's actually no um, of the Stage 1 build. It's actually just playing four rare candies and the basic build and the... Uh, the Meow Scarada EX. That's really interesting that the build is playing just four rare candy, no stage one. But again, with the Mew, the Luxray, if you started the Luxray, it's cool. There's a lot of one ofs in the deck. One Luxray, one Alakazam, one Manaphy, a one, one Beeperl, a one Mew, and a Luminion. So interesting. Uh, we got another build here, once again, using the Meow Scarada. I think this uh, cast form has the attack return that does like damage, and you like draw up to six in your hand. I'm pretty sure that's, that's what that does. This build here also playing a lot of supporters. Three research. 
four Iono, and then three Bruno on top of that. Another Arceus build. Again, Arceus seems like a decent way to play it. We got another Alakazam built here. Not playing any other support options outside of Beeberl. No Mew, no Medicham, no Lilligant, just playing straight. We got a Lost Zone build, and I kind of like this. We got a couple Lost Zone builds here. Uh, Lost Zone build definitely seems interesting. You already kind of have a bit of a spread attack in your deck with your ability. And honestly, Colrus's Experiment and Comfy, it's not that hard to find rare candies, in my opinion. It's actually pretty easy to find rare candies when you're, like, using Comfy and Colrus. And having access to Sableye is also pretty cool. I kind of like this list. Um, obviously, Lost Zone is very, very strong right now. And Sableye works really, really well with... Meow Scarada, as you're able to put three damage on your opponent's bench and then Sableye kind of finish them off later on. I kind of like this build quite a bit of Lost Box. Lost Box, Meow Scarada definitely seems like a pretty decent archetype. We got another build here um, playing the Snorlax deck and also the Mirage Gates. Uh, the other build here doesn't play. It's a bit more of a Sableye Cram deck, but this build utilizing the, uh, the Mirage Gate. And then we got another Arc build here. And we got yet another Lilligant build. This one actually playing Klefki to try to slow Lost Box and like Mew down, which is respectable. Um, I like that. Another Arceus build here. And another Lost Zone build. This one, once again, actually playing a couple of Mirage Gate. Not really playing like many Mirage Gate options apart from just probably the Greninja. But Greninja does work pretty well with Meow Scarada as you are able to like Meow Scarada a Mana Fee and then knock it out, and then, like, Greninja knock it out or something. I don't, it, it makes sense to play the man or the Greninja with this engine because it, you can just easily attack with Greninja. Got another Arceus build here. Another Lost Zone build. Uh, Lost Zone build seems kind of cool. It, it's definitely an interesting idea. Um, and I, I honestly really like the idea of playing Lost Zone with it because, again, you just have a, not, a lot of natural synergy with Sableye. This build doesn't play Mirage Gate. It does play two Raihan, which I'm sure you can... Well, actually, it doesn't even play Water Energy. <laughs> just the two Raihan. But you can still attack with Meow Scarada. It's still a very strong attacker. And this build's kind of cool. We actually see the 1-1 Flying Pikachu, which is good against, like, Lugia and also pretty good against Lost Box sometimes. Unless you're playing against Meow Scarada Lost Box. <laughs> uh, but the Pikachu is nice. Again, I like having... If you're going to play Arceus Meow Scarada, I do like the ability to play it with another attacker, which I feel like you definitely would want to play with Meow Scarada. You would want to play with, like, another attacker if you're playing it with Arceus V-Star. Because there's so many ways you can play it instead of just playing Arceus by itself. Um, the Pikachu seems cute. And then we got another... Uh, Arceus build using the Medicham Yoga Loop strategies, which again, you can Yoga Loop pretty easily. You can like hit a Comfy twice and Yoga Loop it, which is kind of cool. Um, you see another Arc build, another Lilligant build here, another Arc build, uh, another just kind of straight B Barrel build, not playing Arceus or Lilligant, just playing at the Medicham too. We see another Lilligan built here. I like Lilligan too. It's a lot It's a lot stronger when you get access to that V-Star power. Lilligan can also attack in some scenarios, so it's not even that bad of an attacker either. And then we got this build here. Uh, another arc build with Medicham and Luminion and stuff. Uh, this build is a, another straightforward build, actually optimizing the one of Miltank. Makes sense. Miltank can be an annoying wall to deal with. And you also have the double turbo energy already in the deck. So you just kind of like naturally have a decent way to attack. So I kind of like the Miltank here. And then we got another build with Arceus and Miltank in the deck too. Playing a, and Klefki. Actually playing even a heavier count of Arceus 3 3. Actually only playing two copies of Meow Scarada, but a bit more of a teched out build here, but again, utilizing the Arceus V-Star, the Clef Key, the Miltank, the Medicham, just not playing as many Meow Scaradas, literally just playing two in the deck, which is interesting. Another Lost Zone build. This one does play Charizard, so I kind of like that. Since the list we just looked at were kind of just playing Sableye Cram as your only attackers, having the Charizard isn't bad. You don't always need the Greninja. The Greninja is good, obviously, to draw cards, but if you're not playing the Water Energy, then the Greninja doesn't seem very good. I like the idea of Charizard. I mean, Meow Scarada with Charizard isn't bad. I mean, that 30 damage you hit could be relevant down the road. I mean, you hit, like, an EX Pokemon twice with Meow Scarada for 60, and then, like, Charizard could do, like... 250 and that's two, 310 in total which can knock stuff out like Gardevoir EX so I do like the idea of Charizard in this deck uh, this list is interesting it actually plays a one of Mirage Gate but since it does have that like blend of energies it makes sense another Arc build um, another Miltank Klefki build and then we got another like kind of build here and then another Lost Zone deck again not utilizing the Charizard or any Water Energy with the Radiant Greninja this build using the Lilligan alongside a couple copies of Mew to try to set you up, which I do like. A bit more of a respectable build here using the Mew from Celebrations to set you up alongside the Radiant Alakazam. Radiant Alakazam seems like a must-have in Meow Scarada because you're able to Alakazam um, the damage off from the bench and then put it on the active and then attack with Meow Scarada's main attack. Um, this build is interesting. Actually playing a Beauty Fly. Beauty Fly's ability lets you drop to six cards in your hand, which is a really strong ability. Obviously being on stage two, 
not ideal. But in an Iono format, this could actually be kind of decent. I'm um, actually playing four Jet Energy 2 and two Double Turbos and a Shaman. I think that Shaman lets you attach energy to your Pokemon. I think that's what it does. I'm not too sure on that. Um, I'm also playing Peony. Another Arc build playing the Flying Pikachu in the deck too, which I like. Doesn't seem like a bad idea. And then we got another Lost Zone build. Um, another Lost Zone build. And using the Alakazam and Evil Tall. Evil Tall is interesting with the one of Double Turbo. This Lost Zone build is interesting. Opting to not play Charizard or Greninja. But instead, trying to utilize the um, the uh, the Alakazam, which I like. And you do have Psychic Energy. So, like, weirdly enough, Alakazam can actually be an attacker. And that could be decent. There are matchups where the opponent's hand is just massive. Like, I don't even hate attack with Alakazam sometimes in that idea. And then we got another Arc build, obviously. A lot of Arceus decks, man. Another Lost Zone build. This time, try not make use of that Radiant Greninja attack option, which can be pretty good. Um, especially when you can knock out Manaphy. This one here does play Medicham and Alakazam in the Lost Zone engine, which I do like. Medicham and Lost Box is a really cool concept. This one does play two double turbo since you do have that Medicham alongside the Meowskarada. Another Lilligant build, another Arc build. This one's teched out. We got a Leafeon build with Superior V-Star. So kind of a Grass Toolbox deck alongside of the Radiant Jirachi instead of the Alakazam. I'm not sure I like the Jirachi. This build also plays 18 energy in total. Holy schmoly. 15 Grass Energy and 3 Jet, but it does play 4 Gardenia, so it's trying to, you know, optimize Gardenia's Vigor to try to build up your board. I, I respect it. Interesting take on Meowskarada. I mean, you see with Arceus, Lost Zone, and Lilligan, but you can also play with, like, other Grass Pokemon. Like, the Leafeon doesn't seem terrible. I'm not sure about the VMAX, though. I don't know if the VMAX is that good. Grass Knot doesn't seem that great. Superior is kind of cute, though. I don't hate Superior either. 15 energy with Gardenia makes sense too. Another build here. This time, now this one, okay, this one is kind of cool. We see Meow Squirata with Giratina V-Star. Not only do you get access to the V-Star to use the V-Star power, which Meow Squirata doesn't have as it is an EX, but you also get access to Lost Impact as an attack, which sometimes you can knock stuff out because of Meow Squirata's ability on the bench, knocking those things out. I kind of like that idea of a 1-1 Giratina. Even a 2-2 Giratina wouldn't be bad. The only problem is you have to squeeze a lot in the deck. You can see the two Rare Candy and only the two Meow Squiratas. This one here, using Halucha. Halucha Meowskarada does seem like a no-brainer because that does set up math perfectly when you're doing 60 damage to a Pokemon that you can finish off with Radiant Halucha. And uh, it does seem nice. More Lost Zone builds here, utilizing the Halucha. Another Arceus build. Um, more Lilligan builds. Sylveon, now that's kind of cute. I'm not sure the Sylveon is for. Urshifu is not, like, that popular, in my opinion, but... I respect it. I'm a Sylveon fan. I love Sylveon. I love Sylveon. Sylveon is awesome. So it's cool to see somebody trying to make Sylveon work. I'm a fan of Sylveon. Sylveon in Meowskarada seems like a really cool uh, idea. Um, I guess because you have a lot of types. You have Grass, Water, Psychic, Colus. Um, interesting. Krikatune in the deck. This playing is a Krikatune engine with Squovit. Now that's interesting. That's something I haven't seen before. Um, Krikatune is a Grass Pokemon. Hmm. One of that is better than Bibarel. You just have more of a two-prize liability in play, though. Hmm. We got the Lilligant build here with the Klefki and the Mill Tank. Um, some of these builds are, like, pre-Iono, it looks like. You can see, like, Judge was in some of them. So that's kind of the thing. And that's it for the Meow Skarada list. All right, we can take a look at some other lists. Now we got Kukwavel. Now, there wasn't a separate page for Kukwavel, but I did have some Kukwavel lists here to pull up, so we can take a look at what Kukwavel does here. So Kukwavel is a stage 2 EX Pokemon, like Meowskarada. It's got the attack, Exciting Samba, switches Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, then your opponent switches their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. So 1 for 60 with Samba isn't bad. Uh, forcing both players to switch is decent. Um, you can obviously use that with Klefki to make things annoying for your opponent. And then you have Corkscrew Shot that is 230, and then you put two Water Energy from this Pokemon back in your hand. 230, not bad. For two Energy, I mean, hey, that's pretty good. Here's the catch with Kukwavel. Kukwavel works with the other Kukwavel from Scarlet and Violet base set. Scarlet and Violet base set's Kukwavel's ability, whenever you attach, you can attach an extra energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So basically what you do, you hit with Kukwavel EX, you do a lot of damage, do 230 to be exact, you put the two energy back, and then the following turn, use the, uh, you attach for turn, and then use the other stage two Kukwavel, um, the single prize one, to attach an extra energy from your hand, and then you just attack every turn with Kukwavel for free using the Kukwavel Stage 2. Now, it is a lot to set up. You are playing a multi-Stage 2 deck, which is a little annoying. The nice thing about this is because you're retrieving the energy, you can abuse Cheryl. I mean, this list doesn't play Cheryl. Um, playing the Clef Key, obviously, really smart. Using Kukwavel's first attack as a hit-and-run strategy against, like, Lost Box is pretty smart because you're able to hit-and-run into Clef Key, which can be very annoying um, for Lost Box. So, I do like the idea of playing the clef key in the deck playing the jet energy does give you like a decent kind of like hit and run engine with the clef key 
We got another Kukwabo list here. Um, utilizing a Palkia in the deck. Now, I kind of like that. Now, this build is a little bit more greedy. It is playing the one baby Kukwabo and the two Kukwabo EX. But because you have that backup attack with Palkia, it's pretty good. This one does play a lot of supporters. We see Clara. We see Cheryl for the healing. Um, if you're wondering what the Skepsis is, by the way, this is Boss's Order, if you're wondering. Got the Irida. Not playing any research in the deck. Oh, no, it was one research. One Melanie, one Roxanne. A lot of one ofs. Um, but you also have like the Starmie in the deck as an attacker. I kind of like the Palkia in the Kukwabo. Straight Kukwabo isn't bad. The problem is, again, you're a multi-stage shoe deck. Playing Palkia does give you a lot of other options. Palkia's V-Star power does work with Kukwabo. And also, you just have a backup attacker with Palkia. Palkia is a very strong card. I mean, it punishes players for overbenching. And Palkia makes for a really nice backup attacker. I do like the idea of Palkia with Kukwabo. Like, playing Kukwabo by itself isn't bad. If I were to play it personally, I would probably play the Palkia. Again, you get that really strong backup attacker in Palkia, and you can kind of play a little bit more extra attackers. You see the Starmie in the deck. You could even play other water Pokemon. You could play, like, you know, Suicune. We saw in the other list play the Suicune. You could play, well, I guess you don't need Suicune when you're playing Palkia, but you also play, like, the uh, Articuno Paralyzed. Could be a cute option. I kind of like that, though. The uh, the idea of playing the Palkia isn't bad. I, I do rate that. We got another, I think we have another list here. I don't know. We're going, we do have another Quavo list. This one, using Palkia once again, we actually have a decent string of new uh, Pal Day and Starter EX decks here on this page, but we do see the Palkia list once again. Um, the Palkia list here, you, you using the Medicham. Can talk for a sec there. Kind of cute. So what you can actually do in this matchup, you can use Quavo do two thirty two sixty with a belt to a uh, a V Star, and then you Medicham Yoga loop them. That's kind of spicy. Um, but yeah, this build's also kind of cool. Not as like teched out, but also does play the Medicham and the two three two Palkia. But not playing a draw engine is kind of risky in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I like it. I guess you have the Poke Gear, the two Cheryls. I like the heavy Cheryl. Cheryl is really good, in my opinion, with Kokwabble, because you're able to heal it when you do your attacking. Kokwabble having like, what, 320 HP makes it very tanky. But yeah, once again, I would prefer to use Palkia. But now we got the Skeledridge. Skeledridge? I, I cannot pronounce this guy's name for the life of me. So let's read what it does. So it is a new EX with 340 HP. This thing is super duper tanky. Um, it's got the attack song of Vitality. Uh, one for 50. Again, one for 50 isn't bad. You heal 30 damage from each of your Pokemon. Kind of cute. Could be a very fun troll attack versus Lost Box, which is kind of funny. And we got Burning Voice. It is 270 damage minus for two energy. Detect is 10 endless damage, reduce damage on this Pokemon. 270 base is very strong. Now, yes, 10 less damage, reduce damage on it is not great. Now, you can play this with Magma Basin, but there are healing cards you can play in the format to try to heal the Skeledridge. Obviously, a big one could be something like the Radiant Serena, so that when you do Magma Basin to it, you can heal it off with the, like, Radiant Serena. You can play other healing cards. There's, like, the new Basket card in the format. There's, like, Potion and weird stuff like that. Um, this build here does play the Oracorio. I think Oracorio heals 20 damage from your Fire Pokemon. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. Uh, we do have the... Uh, Armor Rouge in the deck for the Energy Excel. I do like that. So basically what you can do is you can Cheryl, heal your boy, again, 340 HP. Good luck one-shotting that. That's more than Duraludon VMAX, which is insane. Um, you heal the damage of Cheryl, then you base into the bench, and then you attach, and then you Armor Rouge the damage back to your active, and then you heal again with like Radiant Serena or, or Corio, whatever the case may be, and then you hit again for 270 damage. And 270 is a lot. You have the two belt in the deck, which can allow you to do 300. Um, you can get through V-Guard energy because V-Guard doesn't work against uh, the uh, EX Pokemon. So all of a sudden you're hitting super hard and one shine some of the belt. I really like that. That is a really smart strategy. We got another Meowskarada list here. We got another Kukwavo. This one's kind of cool. This uh, Kukwavo list is actually playing um, no Palkia, but actually playing a Galarian Zapdos V alongside the new special energy, which counts as a rainbow energy as long as there's no other special energy on the Pokemon. So if you put this on your Galarian Zapdos V, um, as long as you don't have, like, a Jet Energy on or another one of those, it counts as a Rainbow Energy, which is kind of cute. So you can put that on your uh, Zapdos V and attack um, for a pretty good uh, thing for one energy. I guess the reason behind playing it is obviously for the uh, the Maraidon matchup. Kukwavo is weak to Lightning, and you probably would get rolled by Maraidon, even though you can trade really well because you can one-shot it with Kukwavo's main attack. You're going to still struggle, so having access... To the Galarian Zapdos makes sense. I like it. You also have the Sky Seal Stone. And you can also use it against Arceus. We saw like a lot of Meowskarada Arceus. Arceus ain't going anywhere either with the next set coming out. I think Arceus is still going to be very relevant in the new uh, when, the, when the next set comes out. And that will make Galarian Zapdos, Sky Seal Stone a lot stronger. But the cool thing about it, you can actually like sh Irida for Sky Seal Stone. As long as you have that rainbow energy in your hand, you can just Irida for like Kukwavel and Sky Seal Stone. It's kind of cute, actually. I really like the idea of the Galarian Zapdos. It can help you in sticky situations. That's not a bad idea. And then we have Skarada list. And then we got another 
Skeledirge list here. Now, this one's a little bit more greedier. Doesn't play the Armor Rouge um, heal engine. Plays Entei V. So you're just trying to attack with this thing as much as you can. You do have that first attack to heal, um, which is, you know, neat. But again, not having the Armor Rouge engine. I kind of like the heal engine, but again, uh, this list does kind of try to fall back on the Entei V if possible, which is kind of cool. It does play three Basin, eight uh, Fire. You can use Jet Energy with the Entei. I guess what happens is the Skeledirge takes a hit, and then you... Um, Jet Energy Entei with a Basin on it, bring into the active attack with it. Just by Radiant Greninja, not playing the Radiant Serena to try to heal off your Skeledirge, which is interesting. I guess you're trying to get, like, one attack out of the uh, Skeledirge before it dies. Um, the Skeledirge. Well, I, again, I cannot pronounce his name. I apologize. I know somebody in the comments is going to be like, why can't you spell this thing properly? Hey, man, I'm trying my best out here. But uh, I guess that's a bit more of, like, a going on the Entei as your backup attacker. But the, not, the no healing is interesting. The Radiant Greninja obviously has good synergy with the... Uh, with the Fire Energy Basin. Actually, this list doesn't even play uh, Research. It plays Serena, four Chorus. Interesting. Another Quaval list. This one is a straightforward Quaval list playing the four Klefki to try to slow the opponent down again. With Quaval's first attack having the hidden run, it does make sense to play it. So I do respect the Quaval. Again, I still think Palkia would be really good to play it with, but this person here utilizing the Klefki, it makes sense. And then the Irida Battle VIP makes sense. Irida is really good Quaval. It guarantees you rare candy Quaval and also lets you get um, energy, which is kind of cool. We got another uh, Miascarada list playing the Lilligan and the Klefki. Once again, it does make sense. I think that's it for the Paldean starter list here that I could find here on the site. I will leave a link down below to the website if you want to go check it out yourself. But again, we saw a lot of really cool Kukwava lists. We saw a lot of really cool um, Miascarada lists. Miascarada does seem to be the best new Paldean starter that is coming out in the next set. But the other two are good. I think you probably go Miascarada, Kukwava, and then Skeledirge, in, in Skeledirge, whatever, in that order. Uh, Skeledirge, yes, yeah, Ske Skeledridge, 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 is that how you pronounce it? Look, I, I apologize, but yeah, I think Meowskarata is the best one, that's why it had its own page, we got to see a lot of Meowskarata lists, Meowskarata is almost like a better Rabbishak and Talion, which is really, really cool, and then obviously Kukwavl is pretty good, it is a multi-stage 2 deck, but Kukwavl does seem to do pretty well too, and then obviously Skeledridge is pretty good too, but that is it for today's video here on the second channel, looking at the Paldean starter decks from Japan, I'll leave a link to the website down below so you can check it out yourself, there might be even more lists out there floating around that I wasn't able to check to see, on this website, but this is the best list I could find for the Paldean Starters. The Paldean Starters are looking to be pretty good, and they will be in our June set, so definitely get hyped for that. If y'all want to see more early deck lists from Japan here on the second channel, uh, let me know in the comments below what else you'd want to see next. I definitely want to look at um, the other new cards from Clayburst and Snowhazard, and then maybe look at some other new EXs out that aren't kind of like the main, you know, kind of box EXs like the Paladin starters, like some of the other EXs that we're getting, like uh, Quadsire, uh, Fortress EX, stuff like that could be really cool to take a look at. But that'll be for me. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel here and never miss an upload and all the good stuff. And I'll catch y'all later. Bye bye.